Good evening, everybody. It's Thursday, the 15th of August. It's Princess Anne's birthday. Did you know that? No. no. I know that. I know that because I'm two days older than her. So happy birthday, Princess Anne. I'm sure and she's watching. I'm sure she is. It was nice to see you. Um, welcome to the Hazy Hour version of Team Talk. Yes, you're stuck with us again. And tonight I'm going to introduce everybody. I'm going to start with my technical lot, you know, because they tell me off if I, if I leave them to the end, because then they've got a Russian press buttons, you see. So we've got Daz, who's producing everything tonight. Good evening, Good everybody. And we've got Mark, who's our technical guy. He's waving because his sound is off, you see. And then we've got our usual team. We've got Davy Malik. Hiya. We've got Tim. Hi, guys. And we've got the Bountilicious. Oh, don't start with that again. <laughs> <laughs> that is Sav. Hello. But we've got a, we promised you a guest tonight. And we've brought in a friend of mine who's a fellow vapor. So can I introduce Jason? Oh, that's it. Hi, James. Good to see you. Yeah, good, good to see you. And thank you for asking me on. No problem at all. And now we're going to go to the titles. Be back in a minute. There we go. Very professional, aren't we? So tonight we're going to be covering a few subjects. Um, we're going to be covering things like flavorings. We're going to discuss home mixing, and we're going to be talking about clones. But before that, I'm, I know you're all desperate. You've all got loads of questions for Jason. But the main reason I've asked him here is as a fellow vapor, and also to ask how he's doing after all he's been through. So Jason, how are you doing after everything you've been through? Well, I'm doing all right, you know, um, considering what, what happened. Um, so yeah, very disturbing incident, very, very disturbing. Two two weeks ago, I um, <coughs> went out, walked out my front, front door uh, Thursday night, I was attacked by four people in balaclavas, all in black, two of them had hammers. Uh, one had a crowbar and one had something else. As soon as I walked out the door, somebody hit me over the back of the head with a hammer, split my head open. Um, then I got hit by somebody else. Two other people appeared and for about the first 30 seconds, I thought, well, couldn't rationalise what was going on. I thought, this was, um, they're here to kill me. You know, end of story, what are they here for? And um, started making quite a racket and uh, I couldn't exactly fight back, but what I managed to do was grab hold of two of the hammers, the guys with the hammers, the other two were hitting me on the arms, this elbow was like this, and trying to break my um, joints. So, so anyway, I'll cut a long story short, the, I eventually uh, got uh, some guy, was at, I was on the floor with a hand over my mouth, they were tying me up and um, drag, dra put my trousers down, dragged me in the house, tried to stand me up, which I couldn't stand up. <laughs> and uh, asked, were asking me, you know, and this was nothing to do with e-cigs, by the way. This was to uh, what it turned out to do with some uh, a group of people believing I had a, a large sum of gold in the house. It's gold that I own, but it was not here. It was stored in London in a bullion bank. And um, I think it was personally, I think it was a cleaner who gave them the key. I think they had a key to get in. So the uh, the the sort of uh, assault didn't continue in the house, but I was you know dragged in a corner and. Two of them stayed downstairs. I told them where some money was and where, where, where what, what gold was here was. And mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, so very frightening. There's just towel over my head, bleach poured over me, stuff squirted in my face, so they're going to set me on fire. So, yeah, very frightening. Um, and, you know, it, how do you rationalise that, really? It's yeah, very difficult to. I managed to get the uh, mm, bonds off, if you want to call them that. I uh, got myself into the kitchen and cut the, the, the tied two toes, my two big toes together with these tie wraps. It was really, very, very sore. Really sore, really tight. Couldn't get those. I managed to get those off with a knife. And uh, <coughs> I got myself out the door and across to a neighbour's who took me into the house and uh, called the police and an ambulance and I got to the hospital. Um, uh, and, yeah, so it's, that, that's what went on. That's what went on. Um, it was my thoughts of this it was nothing personal as in it wasn't let's go and bat the shit out of somebody i.e. me it was, it was a case of we're going to take a big risk here we're going to go to a premises that we believe there's two and a half million pounds of a gold bullion and uh, if need be because because one, one of the front doors was open and since I went around the house afterwards the one of my locks on the dining room door had been tampered with the windows there have been left open, so they knew they could get into the house, and I think the idea was to uh, get into the house without me being aware. And I was sat where I was sat, in this chair actually, before I went outside. And maybe subconsciously I saw something going on out there, uh, and, I, and, and I was going to go outside, just to be quite honest, I was going to have a pee in the garden, but I walked, out, walked outside, and it was like, well, I think I disturbed them, so the idea was to get me in here, get me shut up. Probably they didn't want any violence. And, um, you know, then they got time to, you know, take whatever they wanted to take, if you will. But, I mean, the, the, the other stuff wasn't here anyway. So, yeah, so if somebody, if somebody had seen an invoice and somebody had seen something in my house, there's only one person who's seen that. Um, so, yeah, and I know that it's I know that it's her because she was also in Ireland with, actually, Deputy General Manager of one of my companies. They're thick, they've known each other for 20 years. And on the Saturday morning before it was in the press, they were texting people asking... Uh, how is he? Is he all right? And do you know something? They shouldn't have known anything because nothing was in the press till 11 o'clock. There was nothing on the internet till 11 o'clock. Uh, mm -hmm. Neither of them contacted me to say, how are you? Didn't contact my mother. The woman cleans for my mother. Uh, but she was ever so keen to contact the guy who does a bit of gardening work for me to contact all the people on the periphery and some nonsense at a taxi driver in Accrington. Let her know at half eight on the Saturday morning. It's just bullshit. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, I'll let the police know. And, you know, they're not as convinced as I am. Of course, they weren't the four people, but part of me thinks she was one of the people in the house because this towel that got thrown over my head, uh, my, my, own, my, my personal interpretation of that is that that person was either beginning to feel guilt or didn't want me to see, even though there was masks, gloves, black jacket, black trousers, boots, they, I couldn't see, I, I couldn't even describe any of them. Mm. But maybe they didn't know that I won't be able to pick up a certain walk or see a pair of eyes. So yeah, and, and it's, you know, it's really odd, they wiped my thighs down, you know, somebody with it, it's like cleaning my thighs, it was just really strange, the whole incident was strange. And when they poured this bleach on me, I said, you didn't pour acid on me because it started to burn, I thought they poured acid all over my uh, genitals. So my underpants, when I got to the other, got to the neighbours, they're all starting to go from uh, grey to white, and just fucking awful, really. Oh, so yeah, yeah, very disturbing. So well, you know, I mean, I, I, what well, I'm, I'm looking at it from this perspective, there's lessons in it for me. What well, either I didn't want any of this money. I thought who wants any of this money? I mean, I want it. I didn't want it anyway. Six years ago, you know, I, I was just normal. I, I'm still normal now. I see myself as normal now. You know, and this, who wants this money? I was going to sell the bus. Said to my brother, I said, you know something on the Friday night, as far as I'm concerned, she gets shut of it, close it all down, 50% sale, sell it all off, give all the money away, put the premises up for auction, give some of the staff who deserve it some money, just get get, get out of it. I'm not interested. Mm. Not interested. Take it all back. I'm just really not interested. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's very sour, really. I mean, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not frightened as such, you know, I'm more cautious outside. It's just, just really quite disturbing, the whole thing. It's like, mm. Uh, I'm angry at those people, you know, I feel like killing them if the truth be known. Um, so I've been buying machetes and crossbows and all this. Nobody's coming in my house again. Nobody yeah. is coming in my house again. Uh, and I was, I mean, I walked out with a pair of flip-flops on. I mean, it's like, it, it, even, you know, there's no, there was no opportunity to even defend yourself, Kat. So, yeah, so that that's the situation that went on. Um, yeah, so I, I don't really want to go on any more about it, but that was... No, I mean, the one thing I want to convey to yeah. you, Jason, yeah. is um, when I read the link, mm. I was mortified. When I read the what had happened, it felt like something personal, because I knew you. 
Yeah. You know, and and when, when it's somebody you know, God, it hits you. Mm. And every one of us felt the same way. Mm. And, and what got me is when I looked on the forums, even the forums where you've had problems, there was nothing but support. And well, so I mean, it, yeah, I and it's okay, and all of this. Yeah, you know? and I thought that was marvelous, and it transcends, you know, a bit of business and a bit of e-cigarettes, doesn't it? I mean, that's all nonsense in comparison, really. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people like me. Some people like the persona they perceive me as this totally wicked businessman. Some people hate it. Some people don't give a shit, and that's the way it should be, you know. But actually, nobody knows me. You know, the girl sat in this room knows me properly. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Well, well, I'd like to, to think we've got a little bit of an insight into you. Mm. Yeah, and yourself as we've well. We've got Karen, to know you over the years. Yeah, I'm, yeah and I'm not being rude there, Kat. What I'm trying oh, to I know say, exactly the, what you're the, saying. The people, who are beginning to, the, the people who have met me and sat down and talked with me understand that, you know, it's... Uh... I know exactly what you're saying. And well, this is something... Can I, can I just yes. say this before I forget? You can. The one thing I would like to talk to you about, Jason, and I didn't bring this up earlier, but you are a pioneer of vaping, one of the pioneers in the UK. Mm. And I'd like to touch on that at some point, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. In the meantime, I'll go back to Sav and see what she has to... Okay. Um, I just want to pass on all the good wishes that have been coming in from our chat. Um, we've had a lot of positive messages coming in from chat that they're shocked at what's happening. They wish that you're feeling tip top and 100% as soon as possible and that everything works out really well for you. And um, That's from our chat. Thank you for that. So that's good. That's good to know. Yeah, you are a pioneer, aren't you? Well, um, um, I, 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 I've been around e-cigarettes for, for, for nearly six years, yeah. I mean, as far as I remember <laughs> it, when we last talked about this, and of course, the chat don't know this, yeah. But didn't you start off selling um, herbal products on I started off, I was selling on eBay for um, three or four years before I sold an mm. e-cigarette on eBay. So I uh, I used to go to, uh, I used to go to Oxfam shops and pick up books and uh, buy a book, a magazine called The Book Collection. I'd go to auctions and buy pound boxes of books and spend hours going through the books. Throw in, I'd put them into three pounds. I'd throw a waste of time. Maybe car boot sale, maybe something I'll look into. And I used to post books off that, that I find or, or sell those on eBay. And I used to, because I had a collection of annuals as well, so I started selling those. And then um, I, I was get, getting interested in the platform, the eBay platform. It was, I was finding it quite you know, exciting, really, just selling something on there. And um, when, I, when I started that the degree at home, in homeopathy, um, what one of the homeopathic magazines had a, 30, a 36 remedy kit for you buy six of them for 18 pounds and the retail at 36.99. So I bought six of those and stuck put those on there. Then found a place to buy homeopathic books in India that were sort of out of print books and imported those. Um, and that's how I started on eBay really. I'd sell secondhand jeans and stuff I bought from auctions and car boot sales, and that developed onto newer products, the homeopathic stuff and the, the homeopathic remedies and the homeopathic books, and that then moved on from there to, and I was still sort of working, uh, I used to sell subscription magazines, I stopped people on the street and uh, I sell subscriptions for magazines, so I mean I've worked, my, I was banned from driving then for drink driving as well, so I had no transport. Uh, and I'd get, get a bus to a different town or jump on a train to a different town and spend the day on the street stopping people. So that's how I started to generate the income to uh, purchase things. <clears throat> and um, I, I, I got hold of some memory cards from uh, a Chinese company. That was the first time I purchased anything from China. Uh, and that's when memory cards were... Uh, you could make some money on them. You couldn't make. You, you can't make anything on them now. Uh, they, they, if you could get a decent size four or an eight gigabyte card, they'd sell. They'd sell. They'd sell mega fast if they were a good price. And I found a company, and I did really well out of those. And um, I got a bad batch that were sort of stretched, which meant that you know if it was saying four gigabyte, they would only hold five hundred and twelve megabyte. And uh, trading standards came around. Came around. And I thought I can't sell these, so I chucked all those on, at the tip. And I was left with, this was January 2008, <clears throat> and I was left with a couple of thousand pounds. I hadn't paid my rent, and I thought, what can I do? And I smoked like a chimney. I still smoke cigarettes now as well, by the way. 
uh, um, and I thought, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to find some sort of quit smoking. I'm going to start buying quit smoking products. So I advertised for uh, any sm quit smoking products, hip hypnotherapy, tapes, Chinese medicine, herbal cigarettes, patches, pills, uh, what, what, you know, quit smoking books. And I got contacted by a lady who from First Union, a lady called Delia, who sent me a picture of uh, the old pen style. Or is it four? I can't remember what it is now. What, what the pen four one pilots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, she sent me, uh, and, and I'd gone MSM with her, and I talked for about five hours that night, and I checked on eBay, is anybody selling them? There was one person who was selling that particular kit, and it, and, and it just so happens it was a lady in Portsmouth, I didn't know that from reading her feedback. And she was making about a £10 a kit, and I thought, do you know something, it's a product that sells, I'm going to buy some, so I, bought, I think I spent £800, I bought 20 kits and 2,000 cartridges, or maybe 4,000 cartridges, they arrived, put those on eBay, uh, they started to sell a little bit. Uh, then I bought some. I thought well, I'll get another cigarette kit, and I bought the uh, TSC 901. Um, and they started to sell. And I went to a printer's, and I thought well, got into print some leaflets up and sent those out with each order with my mobile number on because I didn't have a. I, I operated totally wicked without a, without a business bank account for the first two years. I couldn't didn't have any, you know, because uh, for, for for a variety of reasons. So anyhow, to cut a long story short, yeah, it's the genesis of. TW myself with electronic cigarettes was from a scratch start reel, and it was just um, just jumping in. The, the only the only other real seller in the UK then, and he doesn't sell them now. Was eSigs.co.uk was about the only other person really selling them. Yeah. Uh, and we were virtually both selling the same products, which was the Pen Style DSC 901 and the RM4081, the more super cigarette yeah. atomizers and cartridges. And um, <clears throat> the, the the first fluid I got, somebody uh, somebody sent me a pipe kit with some fluid in it, and I thought nobody was going to want to buy this stuff. But I put the ten bottles. It was a Marlboro fluid. I put the ten bottles on sale, and they sold. And somebody on a forum, on the Men Sig forum, oh, it's great stuff. This I thought people like fluid, right? Okay. So then I scooted around. I got First Union sent me a load, and it leaked all over the place, and I was already decanting it. Uh, so I went looking around for some uh, a Chinese seller of reason, reasonably good fluid, and I thought, well, if I bottle it properly, put a proper label on it, uh, why don't I do that? And by this time, of course, I'd opened the electronic cigarette company. An eBay customer who contacted me and mm -hmm. said, if you're interested, I'll design websites. I can. I've checked around. You've probably got the most amount of products in the UK at the moment. Do you want to? Do you want to? Build a website, and so I put, spoke to him, and he said, "You give me ten percent of the business, open a business, <clears throat> give me ten percent of the business, and I'll design the website." And he was called Steve Jardine, and uh, I lent products from Pillbox to Tech until we designed some products for Tech. And Kate Welsh uh, was my girlfriend, stroke uh, partner at the time. Um, she opened the bank account, and you know, allowed that to happen with her ability to get credit and stuff like that. And we rented a small premises at Brookmill that you visited. Mm -hmm. uh, we just rented a top office there. And uh, Pillbox lent, Pillbox was selling on eBay, Pillbox lent tech its kits. And then we got a tech kit branded. And then when the BBC did an article in October 2008 and everything just went bananas after that. Mm -hmm. uh, and TW opened then and, uh, and the rest is history, if you will. So, you know, yeah. I advertised, uh, I bought the two URLs and, I just stuck uh, stuck an advert, well, not even an advert. I just put a post on uh, the Sig forum um, asking, "Is anybody interested in maybe running a, a t uh, running a total?" And bear in mind, total wicked was nothing. Then we're turning over maybe two hundred pounds a day. Yeah. Anybody interested in uh, opening a total wicked site in America? And well, only three people responded. Patty Centara responded and just sent a photograph of herself. And I thought, well, God, she looks all right. So I sent some stuff over there. And uh, I didn't realise she was living at her mother's. She didn't have a computer. Right, it was a nightmare. Patty didn't have a clue what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I clue what to do. So I, I, I said, listen, Patty, just go and rent a house with at least a garage, will you? I'll pay. I'll send you the money for the rent. Stick the stuff in a garage. Get your brother to buy some shells. And the first time I went over, I nearly shot that down because three months since that I went over and the place was just bottles all over the place. She didn't know what she was doing. Uh, so, so that was the genesis of TW USA, really. And, uh, a lot of hard work in the early days, and um, you know, and really just, I suppose, in many ways, fighting my own corner, which has given people the impression that oh, the guy's an asshole. Some some people think that, other people think no, he's all right, and other people think whatever they think. So that doesn't really bother me too much. That doesn't bother me too much. But 
I, I sort of understand it because I've just sort of weaved my own path, if you will. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it all got a bit too much over the last uh, couple of months, hence the reason. It had turned it all very professional with, with Fraser stepping in and I asked him to come and do that. And it, uh, and, and it didn't leave... It, it wasn't. It was a totally wicked. I was used to, but it wasn't. It had changed, if you will, uh, mm. and it's turned into more of a corporate uh, business now, and that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I that's great, and it needs to be that. And I'm still the main shareholder, but my 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 part in it was done. My part mm. was to be the seed and the you know to 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 grow it and build the brand, and then I could deliver that on to people who could take it further, and I've done that. So I, I'm quite happy mm. with that, really. Well, on that note, and, that, and that's and that's the in a in a you know a, 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 a babbleish type of way, right? <laughs> what happened? Yeah. Well, more about that. We'll, we'll yeah. tell you how it's like when we come back. We're going to have a short break now. Somebody's missing. Yep, yeah, we lost cat. Where's cat gone? <laughs> uh, now, who, who's got the running order to hand? Because I uh, certainly haven't. Draw the boss now, Tim. It's all oh, thanks you. very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew there was something here, you know. Um,
Right, okay. Uh, welcome back. I think we're back in the room, certainly. Uh, Kat's probably just uh, broken something, and hopefully she'll be back very shortly. Um, now, um, we need to really be talking, we're going to be talking about uh, mixing juices and uh, pretty much how and how it should not be done. Um, so, I mean, I need, really, where's, where's Davey? Davey's on the end. Now, I'm going to bring Davey into this one yeah. first off, mate, because uh, you've got some experience with juice mixing yourself. Um, and, uh, I mean, as, as, a, as a mixing lad, you're obviously mixing stuff for yourself and your friends. Um, yeah. And, uh, I mean, what, what, are your, what are your feelings on how people should be dealing with uh, mixing juice, etc.? It's got to be done properly. Um, you've got to take precautions because what we are dealing with at the end of it is nicotine, which can um, it can be dangerous, let's face it. It's got to be stored correctly. It's got to be kept out of the reach of children. And it's got to be, when you're mixing the stuff, it's just, it's got to be done properly. It's got to be done clean. You need gloves. You need protective clothing. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yep, no, that's absolutely fine. Now, I mean, from, from my point of view, I mean, I work in the retail trade and... Uh, when it comes down to mixing juice in store, we just don't do it um, because we haven't got the hat, the gloves, the clean room, or anything else like that. Now, obviously, we'll show people how to mix juice um, yeah. and, and, and give them information on computer programs and various other things that they can use to, to aid their own home mixing. But, uh, I mean, from our point of view, it's, it's, it's pretty much a taboo thing to do in store and sell on to people because, I mean, it just, it just doesn't work like that. Um, and, I mean, uh, I mean... Quite, quite honestly, I think it's it's one of those things which is a little bit uh, a little bit touchy at the moment. Yeah, welcome definitely. back, Kat. Yeah, and, um, uh, okay. it, it's something you know. I don't. Um, I only mix juices for either myself or friends. It's not something I'd give to someone I wouldn't know. It's not something I'd sell. Oh, absolutely. <coughs> I mean, I I think probably we can bring Jason in here in, in on this point because obviously <coughs> yeah. you've got more of an insight into how things should be done properly and how they are done properly. Well. Um, with regard to, I mean, I don't mix my own fluid. I, I just buy, well, I don't buy it. I just take a bottle of um, pre, pre, pre mixed <laughs> fluid, uh, which, but, but, for, and that's ju just, just because it's, e it's easy for me. But I do understand, and of course, I think for, um, for our customers, mixing is hugely important. What we have in our four uh, company owned shops is we have a mixing bar, uh, and what we have in there is we have a, a bottle of the uh, nicotine. 72 milligram nicotine, uh, the dilutants and all of the, all of the flavors that are attached to the red label, well, the gold gold standard range. Uh, we don't mix bottles of fluid for the customers. What we will do, we will uh, invite the customer over, and, and generally people, the people who come into the stores have got maybe something like a tornado. So the uh, the member of staff who's running the mixing bar will uh, run through uh, our mixing documents. Uh, explain the uh, ingredients used in in an in, in any liquid first of all. So the first stage, or, or what I like the staff to do anyway, the first stage is to ask the customer what they're using at the moment. Then explain to the customer if the customer doesn't know the difference between a pre-mixed fluid and a mixture of own fluid. Um, then the penny drops with a lot of people. Oh right, okay, I didn't know you could, you could mix your own. When they realise it's only three main ingredients, then what we do is get the uh, mixing guide that we send out with every mixing kit. We ask them to um, choose a flavour, and we will uh, we will make them a flavour of a flavour of their choice and their strength, and just put that into um, a tank cartridge for them, and either allow them to vet that cartridge in the store on one of our clean atomizers. So we'll we'll put a clean atomizer, let them try it. Once they've tried it, we'll then give them that cartridge to take away for for, for them. You know, with the intention of it, introducing them to um, you know the first experience of mixing their own fluids. So I, I agree. I don't think mixing fluids up in a, in a shop is is ideal. Um, however, I think if it's done properly, it can be done. You know, even if you're mixing a 10, 20, or a 30 mil to sell onto people. But we we don't do that to sell. We just do it to introduce people to the uh, platinum ice and the titanium ice mixing kit, really. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm absolutely on board with that because I work yeah. in one of your resellers. So yeah, um, it's uh, it's it's something we do as well. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, what we what we're sort of quite keen to sort of try and get over to people is that I mean, Bob down the market with his stuff that his mates knocked up yeah. in the shed is really not a good idea. I mean, there's been incidences of uh, mouth ulcers, burns, that sort of thing, yeah. all going on down here in South, and uh, you know, it really it really isn't good. And uh, I mean, it may it it may be thirty mils for four quid, but 
if it's going to send you to hospital, uh, it, it's really not it's not good at all. It's not worth it, and this is a dilemma, isn't it, with the um, the the situation that's been going on with uh, regulation at the moment as well. We're, we're so discordant as um, all all of us now, totally wicked as well as everybody else. There's no real. Um, there's no real unity. Every, everybody's doing th their own thing, and yeah. everybody's trying. You know, from a, from a perspective of a retailer, most people are trying to make a quick buck, which is understandable. It's a tough environment for people. Uh, from the perspective of companies, everybody's got their probably their own reasons for uh, their own philosophy on what they feel is relevant regulation. For example, e lights feel 18 milligram in a in, in a cartomizer kit is relevant. Why? Because they only sell that. For ourselves, we believe that anything up to 72 milligram, all chip compliance and uh, ROHS C certified uh, w with all the proper um, safety precautions yeah. on the packaging or the product as we sell our goods basically mm -hmm. we see no reason for any other any other type of regulation then you've got like you say people who are getting the nicotine from where and it might be decent nicotine for all we know getting the nicotine from wherever they're getting it from the perception is it's mixed up in an environment that we don't know what's in it it's been tampered with etc mm -hmm. so what we're doing is we're leaving ourselves wide open to be shot in the head yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, there's, there's, there's plenty of instances of people that are putting a website up, selling juices, saying, and there's, there's one, for instance, that I know of down here that they're saying everything's food grade with the exception of the nicotine. And to my mind, everything should be pharmaceutical grade. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just very strange to see how they're getting, getting so much trade. And I mean, TS down here have been tipped off in, on various things and uh, they are looking into it. I mean, there's there's even the there's even the odd shop that's knocking stuff up on the counter for people, and uh, you know it really, it really, it really shouldn't uh, shouldn't be gone. Um, is there, has anybody else anything to add on the uh, on the mixing side of things before I try to back in? Um, I just have to say I totally agree. Um, I look at some of the the people that pop up online and. The flavours and things sound amazing, but what I'd love to say on their website is just a little bit more clarity about, I'd love to see pictures of their prep areas and things like that. I'd love to see just a little bit more. I know that they can't give away all their, their secrets and their hints and tips or whatever, but just a little extra safeguard before I'm happy to buy is, is the way I, it sits with me. Mm. No, that's that's fine. Uh, Sav, are there any more questions about the the mixing side of things in chat? Or, or... Uh, there's a lot of people that are saying that they when they mix their own, they know that the standards that they're mixing to are the same as if they would invite somebody round to have a, a meal in the house. So they ha quite happily give it to sort of friends and things. But I think most people agree with the when you're selling it, it sort of it steps up a level, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it yeah. does. It does. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. It's, uh, it's, one of, it's one of those things. I think we, I think we're stuck with it for a while because it's going to carry on until there is some sort of regulation that, that, that gets yeah. rid of it. I think. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also, sorry to interrupt. There's also something else I think is to bear in mind because we are I involved in the industry in a deeper way than most of the 90% uh, of the people who use electronic cigarettes. And this is really true. And I think this is forgotten a lot of the time. To a lot of the customers who come into our stores. It's not a huge priority in their life. It's something that they do. They found it really useful because it's limited the amount of cigarettes they use. They're really very ill-informed. You know, they, they, what they've read in the newspaper is the truth. What the friends tell them is the truth. Um, and, they, and 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 that that means that the all this sort of stuff we're talking about, they don't know that by going and buying a fluid off the market, they have no understanding. They don't even know what a premixed fluid is, most people. Uh, and this is what, what I find. I keep saying it to Matt, the guy in the Blackman store, Matt, you must understand this, that the customers, even if they say they've been using it for three months, six months, I bet if you said to them, do you, do, what fluid do you use? Titan, oh, did you know that's premixed? No. What do you mean it's premixed? Well, let me explain. That's pre-mixed. It's a set flavor. It's a set strength. It's dotted, dotted on. And there's also this other option here. People just don't know. I mean, re really, if you sp if you spent a day in any of the stores and started to probe the the general user who just pops in for a battery, or can I have a bottle of the Titan fluid tobacco, 18 milligram? It, it, it's just something that they bought. They've used. It's okay. There's no other awareness of um, uh, anything other than that, really. Uh, so how 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 do you mitigate that when you've got people all over the place selling the product? Mm. It's okay if you if you know what you're doing, but if you don't know what you're doing, and, and you know, unfortunately, and you know, I don't want to hark on back to what happened two weeks ago, 
this was people getting greedy for something else and everybody in today's environment is attempting to get by so if they see a product that's selling you know that, that they will sell it you know they will sell junk products on a market and to be honest with you I've got to say this at some point if you're desperate why who wouldn't do it yeah yeah who wouldn't do that I agree. I mean, I've just got a, a little bit of feedback coming in from chat. Um, there's a couple of people have been talking about market sellers and saying a lot of them get tarnished with the same brush. Um, mm. We've got one guy in the chat at the minute that, who's a market seller and he says he only sells Hang Sen, Decang or Liquid Juice. Excellent. And um, I can understand the frustration if you're a legitimate vendor that is selling on a market that you can easily get tarred by a lot of the guys that have picked up something, don't really know what it is, they say, ah, we'll stick it out for sale and hope power goes. This doesn't just happen on the market because TW sellers sell on the market, they do a great job. It's not about actually the market, it's about you, because some of the websites sell absolutely grim fluid. Mm. Absolutely grim fluid and the information on it is is very misleading to say the least. The, the stuff, the way that it arrives, you don't know what you're getting in your bottle, you haven't got a bloody clue. Mm. So if somebody like the MHRA wants to go and grab a bottle of that, they can hang us out to dry, mm -hmm. uh, and, so, and and how are you going to limit that? You know, it becomes it's extraordinarily difficult to manage that, isn't it? It's very very difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my favourite story of the I mean, it's it's it's, it's on the same thing. But my little favourite story recently is uh, the guy that came into the shop and he wanted to buy some gold standard concentrate, and I went, "Yep, um, have you got the rest of the stuff?" He went, right. "No, no, no, I vape it as it is." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I say why he goes because it's two ninety nine. So he, yeah, and there you go, and he, and that gentleman didn't know that, didn't know that it's just yeah. the bottle of e liquid to him. That's right, yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah there's, 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 there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, people that uh, really need to sort of clue themselves up out there, and I mean, you see them every day. So yeah. it's, uh, I've it's, just had another comment from chat saying I watched a lady selling on a market. God, well, your dad is back. Oh, now, he's we're, back. now we're back on the air. <laughs> what have you done, Des? Des brought sorry about that, folks. <laughs> sorry about sorry about that, everybody. Hopefully that shouldn't have been any interruption. The hangout just kicked me out, so we're still on air, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> almost a seamless link then. I oh, do apologize. <laughs> we're all getting chucked out and turned tonight. Oh dear, dear, dear. I don't know. I don't know, like us. Um, Kat, welcome back. Thank you. Um, everything went. Yeah. Keyboard, camera, mouse, computer was on, but I couldn't get anything to work. <laughs> anyway, we are coming up. We may as well go to the next lot of adverts. Um, I see Mark's preparing for them there. So we'll go to the next lot of ads and then we'll sort ourselves out after the break. Back in a minute.
So there's a whole community of um, vaping chats, isn't there? Radios and videos and things. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, yes, Jason. There is a whole community. Oh, sorry. Did, could you hear me? Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> but as everybody in chat is saying, they like the less polished show. All oh, right. Okay. Well, it's good. Yeah, because that's it's what this is. It's good to be right. Just a normal everyday vapor again. Well, what was that before? But uh, welcome yeah. to well, our world. Huh? Welcome to our world. That's what we are. That's right. Just a bunch of everyday vapors. And <laughs> I'm one of the worst. <laughs> Well, you're not can... on, are you? Because you're on Vet TV. Yeah, but God you knows why. I can't remember the name of anything. You're a special I'm, vapor, so you can't. I'm special. Yes, I think you're everybody on vet. the team would agree. <laughs> then it yeah. shows. White, look at the white headphones. You're telling us you're not special, and you've got white earphones on. Oh, of course. You want to see the ones I've got downstairs? They're gold. That's something for Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. I know you. Uh, that's that's him getting battered. Next well, are you going to the vet fest on Saturday, Cat? Uh, what about vet fest on Saturday? What's happening there? We've got quite a team going down. Yeah. Tim's going. Mm -hmm. Davey there is going. Mm -hmm. Of course, Dave won't be in the country. Dave Kitson won't is going. No, Dave Kitson's yeah. going. Um, Dave Andy and the Swaff team are going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the rest of us have got to stay here and keep VTTV going. So are you not? So you're not going then, no? No. No. Is, is it the same? Is it Tamworth at the same hotel it was at two years ago? So that's the only one I've been to. Yeah. Is it, yeah. And is it all tickets or can people? No, no it's all free. It's all absolutely free. Just wander oh, on. All right. In. Okay. All right. No, it's uh, it's going to be bigger and better than it was before. I mean, there's going to be yeah. a lot more people there, um, and there's going to be a lot of filming going on from our point of view. And I'm going to be doing uh, live radio from the bar in the evening. Oh, great. Um, and hopefully I'm going to get something live. I've got a guy um, in the States who's going to be hosting my show tomorrow. Okay. And uh, we're going to be streaming in, yeah. in from the Tamworth Arms, which should be full of vapors and vapor by the time I get there. So are you, are you streaming to the USA then? Is that, is that um, the, our, wife, our wife four streams worldwide in the yeah. same way that VTTV does. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. always worldwide. Okay. Uh, and we've got people from... I mean, every, every country. I mean, when we, uh, as we had recently, we had uh, Farsalinas on the show, and okay. uh, he, he brought in listeners from the Philippines, Australia, New Zealand. It was, right. uh, it was a, a really, really good night. Um, yeah. You know, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all worldwide. Everything that uh, we do from the UK vaping media wise is a, it's a worldwide right. thing. It goes everywhere. Um, likewise, the guys in the States, when they do shows, it comes over here as well. Yeah. If you can stay up that late. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's true. It's the. Yeah. It's, the it's, a of, it's a bit of a killer. It's a bit of a killer. But uh, no. well, that's it's, a big uh, day. That's quite a big day, really, isn't it, on Saturday then? Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. It's huge. Mm. It's too big for me, I'm afraid. I, I just don't do huge crowds. So I'm quite happy to stay at home and keep the. Keep the station going. Keep keep flying the flag, you know, because there's still a lot of work that has to be done behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't know it with the professionalism you're seeing here. <laughs> so I <laughs> so is. is is Vape TV live all day? No. It it's it's live. We are supposed to be live six nights a week. No, I don't mean that. I mean I mean on Saturday. On Saturday, no. For the vet we don't think so. Don't right. think um, the bandwidth's going to be able to hold out. No. Uh, but there'll be, film. there'll be an awful lot of filming, and the SWAF team are going to be filming, and they've got a booth that they're setting up for people to go in and vent their spleen, basically, oh, and say what they think. So I think that's going to produce some brilliant footage. I can't wait like to see what comes out of that. Box, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see that. So that's all going to be good. Really looking forward to that. Um, wish I was going in one way, and glad I'm not in another. Too many crowds for me. But the big the thing for me. Going. Sorry, Kat. I just, um, I'm not going there to use new mods and all that stuff. I'm going there. I don't do crowds either. I'm going there to meet the people I chat with on a daily basis and get to see. 
who that person is and what they use and how they go about doing it. I'm really looking forward to it. I can't yeah. wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, Gary will be there. Um, um, Gary and the drip tips. Yeah, it's Gary all right. And the it's all right, Gary Dibble, isn't he? Mm. Good yeah. guys, well, Gary Dibble. Hi, we Gary. have a name for Gary, but we can't say it in public. Come on. <laughs> you, can, you can in the UK, just not in the States. Yeah. <laughs> and Gary always knows who we're talking about. I mean, it starts with T and ends with T. Yeah, and we, he's our beloved. He yeah. ends with T. Well, true. Gary does so much for charity. And Children in Need is his pet yeah. project. Hmm. And um, he's working his socks off at the moment to get things ready for, for Children in Need. Yeah, he's going to be selling some special drip tips with a percentage going to Children in Need, and they are beautiful. Mm -hmm. So hunt them down, everybody. Find them at Vapefest. Hunt them down and tell them we sent you. Aye. Yes. So his drip tips, are they, are they steel, or what, what are they made out of? I think the the special ones that he's bringing are stainless steel. I think he's got right. three very beautiful ones, but he has been um, making his own on the lathe that he's been... I, I don't know what it is. It's, I'm not sure if it's acrylic or what, but they're beautiful, the handcrafted ones he does. But he's Absolutely got those stunning. proper stone ones. Yes. True stone. True, True stone. stone, that's it. True stone. Mm. And they are stunning. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Mm. So he's been doing some excellent work with them. Um, and the stainless steel ones that you see are beautiful as well. So he's hoping to get those sold at the fest, and he's hoping to break his thou thousand pounds for children. I think he's him. already broke that. I think he wants to break the two thousand now, which um, with there's been a lot of other people getting involved with auctioning things off and putting the proceeds towards the the children that need funds. So it's doing amazingly well. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And people, I suppose, can just make donations as well, can't they? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Gary's Everybody in the chat, so they should all be chipping in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys well, he does a drip tip a day, doesn't he? Because he's still <coughs> right. doing his drip tip a day for oh, sale. Is he, he has not, been. Is he in chat or is he not there? He, he was in chat. chat. Yes, well, he, he in says. Chat, yeah? mm -hmm. He might tell yes. you. Mm -hmm. He says he's... Um, he'll probably fill with eventually, but um, he's been doing a drip tip a day. I think he's still got seven or eight left to do that he was going right. to complete. And they were being snapped up within seconds. As soon as he mm. put them up on the forums, they were gone like that. I've been trying to get one for weeks. Well, it'd be um, nice to have a stone one, wouldn't it? If somebody's if somebody's um, polished the polished the stone to 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 be a drip tip. That would be yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Gary's just said he hopes to raise a thousand pounds on the day, and so far he's got one thousand seven hundred in the Children in Need Fund. That's fantastic. Well done, Gary. Fantastic. So he's doing wonderful. It is. That's brilliant. Well, it's something he's done every year. I wonder if um, you could make crystal drip tips. You'd get a crystal and, you know, for... Oh, rock crystal. You know, proper crystal, you know. Yeah, like, uh, proper rock crystal. That yeah. would be something. It would, wouldn't it, if you could carve Did it? You, you, know, you never saw the uh, the episode. I'm going to bring it up. Dave Kitson. Right. Uh, the glass drip tip. Yeah. No, I didn't. Where he got... He, he bought a glass drip tip. And I think that was a big fest, wasn't it, last year? Yeah. And he thought, I'm going to have one of these, a glass one. They're better than all the others. They're more expensive than the steel ones. And I'm going to have one. And he bought this glass drip tip and he nursed it all the way home. Right. And on the Sunday, he opened it up with all its wrapping. And he, he just sat there and he put it into his little... Thing okay. and it smashed into smithereens on screen, and we all burst out laughing. <laughs> it was, it very was funny. gutted. Yeah. It was gutted. He paid a fortune for this trip to. Yep. So you're better off with a stone one, then, aren't you, really? Definitely. So the moral Probably. is get, get get one of Gary Dibley's stone drip tips. Is the moral of that story? Mm -hmm. Definitely. There are, you know, there are a lot of people out there that collect mods, but these days there are even more out there who collect drip tips. Drip tips, yeah. 
Yeah, I do. I, I'm not fussed about mods, but... I've oh, got a gold pledge to drip tip, look. Gold pledge nice. Ooh, ooh. I've got a bronze one. This is what the robbers wanted. They wanted the gold yeah. plate to drip tip. The drip tip. <laughs> That's what they wanted, you see. That as long as they didn't get your drip tip. Injuring my body for a gold plate to drip tip. <laughs> Swines. If somebody touched me drip tip, they'd be held. Yeah. Yeah. We should have a drip tip uh, ejector, shouldn't we? Speed of a bullet. <laughs> Keep up my house, you get it with a drip tip. Yeah. Cryptid Soros. That one's yeah. pretty hideous. It looks like a Grecian urn. It does a bit. We could do with a couple of exploding e cigs for incidents like that, couldn't we? <laughs> Sorry, what do you want? <laughs> You're getting carried away, no I am getting carried away, yeah. <laughs> or I could have had a nicotine expeller. <laughs> Well, I didn't. I just had a pair of dri uh, d uh, not drip tips, drip tips. I had a pair of flip flops on. That meant I couldn't flipping run. I just tripped up over myself. You see, you never. I'm going to show you something, right, Cat? You know, I'm sure you're not interested. But these now, I've now got these to wear in the house that I can. Uh, so if I go outside in them, they've got a heel on them. I can spring about now. They don't just fly off my feet. Okay. But I was better off with a pair of Dutch men lesson in this is, right? That was a main lesson I learned. Go and get yourself a pair of Jesus sandals. I'm being serious. Last Saturday, I went and got my Jesus sandals. I got myself a thirty-pound watch, right? Because all my other, they took the watch. I thought, you know something? Don't want that. No expensive watches now. Thirty-pound watch, Jesus sandal, car's gone. Take it all away, right? Okay, I'm off on a spiritual quest. Okay, into the land of the totally wicked and out the other side. And out the other side. Yeah. No, well. But it depends. Where, where am I going to pop out? You see, that's the that's the question, isn't it? We never know, Jason. We never know. Where we going. never know. We never know, you see. <laughs> never know what's going to manifest. <laughs> so well, yeah, I just you know, it's a, it, it's surprising what's important, and these Jesus sandals have become quite important this week. It's like right, and I've got my machete. I've been outside with my two machetes. Right, this is what next time. <laughs> that's an hand off, leg off, head off. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, right, come back now. Come back. Right, to I'll, me. I'll send you my copies of Spock. Don't come round to the house uninvited. You can't, please don't come to the house uninvited. <laughs> Upstairs is a crossbow with a piranha tip on it. <laughs> I'm being serious, it'll carve a, a one inch hole in somebody at 600 foot per second. You know, I've got my sword there, machete by the door, baseball bat, locks on every door in the house now, and it's like coming to my domain, you're trapped. I'll switch the lights off, night vision goggles on. And we go a hunting. It shouldn't have to be like that. It shouldn't have to be like that, but that's the way it is in this country. You know? so, you know, so, so to answer your earlier question, how has it affected me? It's actually made me touch my dark side. Mm. Because you know, I've been having some really vivid um, thoughts about getting people in warehouses tied up. You were the one who has got my car keys, was it? Right, okay, bump. Um, which one had my hands tied behind my back? Right, bump. Mm -hmm. And we put them in the meat blender, blend them, pay ten grand to the guy, pay ten grand to the guy at the crematorium, just burn these for me, will you? Done and dusted, they've gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Off planet Earth. I think Good everybody reason. can relate to that. Though. Well, it's not going to happen. But what I'm saying is, I mean, of course, that's that's how you feel. It's like Star Wars. I'm touching. Well, no, I don't. I sort of oscillate between the two, so I come into balance. So I oscillate to the dark side. Then mm -hmm. the light side pops up and says, No, 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 no. Forgive them. It's fine. And I blend it together, right? It's not fun. I just have a guess what? I'm going to sit and talk with cats. Yeah, of course and you are. It's perfect. Of course it is. Yeah, there we are. So what's the problem? You've I've had fun, haven't you? Candles, I've got a gold drip tip. <laughs> I've got my Accurist watch back. I'm back to what I was, you know, when I was off around the charity mm -hmm. shop. It's all all right. Mm -hmm. So they've done me a favour, is the, is the message of the uh, diatribe. I'm just talking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm being sort of semi-serious as well, so just a bit of a, bit of, a bit of normal Jason there for you, you see. And that's why I got booted out of TW, because it's like, God, the guy's freaking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> What's he going on about? Is he serious? No, it's just Jason. So I booted out my own company, what about that? That's a whole other show in its own right, isn't it? It is, but... You can, you can come and do that with me on the radio. 
I'll do yeah, that on the radio. Yeah, I'll do yeah, that on the radio. radio. Well, we've can got, Kat join us? Because Kat's Kat like can join us. Yes, Kat Kat's can join like us. Kat's like my muse. Yeah, no, she can certainly join us. So yeah, can nice sort of rub the crystal, she can sort of rub the crystal ball and it'll be like, whoa, hang on a minute. My crystal sign. drip tip. Oh, <laughs> here I'm coming, yeah. Kat's here. She's bringing out the... <laughs> <laughs> she's bringing out the whatever she's bringing out. Ah, yes, you never know, Jason. You never know, you see. But yeah, I'll come and do a radio show at some yeah. point. I've got you on my Skype, so I'll shoot you a yeah. message. Yeah. What days yeah. do you do these shows? Uh, Friday nights, uh, 9 oh. o'clock through till whenever. Right. Um, you should talk to Alex as well because Alex was the first employee for Pillbox. She was a lady who went over to help with the USA, straight in the USA, a 26 year old girl. She did a brilliant job. Mm -hmm. So Alex yeah, has yeah. been with TW for five years as well. Yeah, no, no, she's more than welcome to come along. Yeah, you should have a chat. Yeah. Well, why don't you join one of the shows, Alex? Yeah, I can do. Yeah, so Alex will join you as well, Rob. She okay. could have a night with just Alex. Yeah, 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 no, that's fine. Well, we can do that. Yeah, we can do yeah. that. And you're welcome back. Yeah, anytime. You know that, Jason. Yeah, well, I mean, I've been, I've been, I'm, enjoy, I'm enjoying myself, you know. Mm. I'm glad. Yeah. And you're contributing to the chat, and that's what we wanted. Yeah. And we wanted to, just to be sure you were all right. Yeah, no, I, well, I'm, I, I am all right. I'm actually all right. You know, I do have a sort of resilience, really. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it was a really bad situation, really frightening situation. It's made me care, cautious at the moment of going outside till I've got these lights sorted and a proper alarm system. Uh, but other, other, and actually, it's even, in, and this is the truth as well. Even in the day, I'm walk, looking outside in the day now in my own frigging garden. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the sort of stuff I don't like. Uh, but I mean, that will, that will go, you know. So I'm not, I'm sleeping all night, and um, you know, there's no uh, permanent injury. But then again, you know, these characters, they had no idea that, you know, that smack on the head, I haven't crushed my skull. They had no idea. You see, so it's just really just, I just think it's bang out of order, to be quite honest with you. You yeah. know, that, that's my, my overriding feeling. It's bang out of order, and somebody who I trusted is shit on me, and that's the thing that I, that, 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 that gets my goat more than anything, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Absolutely. Well, let's hope they catch yeah. them and bloody yeah. quick. Yeah. And the book is thrown at the buggers and they're yeah. locked up for the rest of their days because yeah. they could have killed you. Mm -hmm. And they'll do it to somebody else and that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, they'll do it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're coming up to the close to the end of the show. I'd like to thank you very much, Jason, for, oh, well, thank you for coming having... on. Yeah. You've been an absolute joy. We've chatted that much, and we haven't even got to the subject of clones, but we will do next week. We've so. got next week. It can wait. And thanks to the team, to Davy, to Sab, to Tim, and to our production staff, who've been absolutely fabulous. So all I've got to do now is to remind everybody that Sunday, Dave Kitson should be back. So we've got Dave's Tackle Box Monday, 10 year tip. Tuesday, we've got Vapor Scene with Marco, followed by DE Talk for our German viewers. And on Wednesday, us lot are back. Team Talk's back. And then we've got the Hazy Hour, which could again be us. I don't know. I've no idea. But as you lot are all looking forward to Vape Fest at the weekend, I just want to say to everybody, have a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous time. Right? Really enjoy it. And say hi to everybody from the poor ones that can't get there. And Tim, I know you're going to be there. Yep. Have a great time, mate. And, and David. We're going to be listening yeah. to you on the radio. Yeah, don't yeah. forget, RY4 Radio, 6 o'clock Saturday night. You know where it is? RY4.com. RY4radio.com. Yeah. RY4 Radio, everybody hear that? You're going to have to be listening, Jason. That goes to you as well. You'll have yeah, to be no, listening. I will do. Well, I've got um, I've got Rob's uh, Skype, and um, I, I'll find the website. Yeah, get on there and listen, Davy. Have a great first vape fest. I will. I'm really looking forward to it. You yeah. will enjoy it. And everybody, so, remember, hunt down Gary Dibley. Yeah, get a stone drip to hunt the dibbers. Hunt them down. <laughs> so on that note. All I've left to say is good night, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you've enjoyed it all. Good night, everyone. Good nice. night. Bye.
Bye. Bye.